also now on the Innovation Show. We welcome Gary Connolly, president of HostinIreland.com. Welcome to the show. Thanks very much. So l- let's uh, let's talk about Host in Ireland. Let's jump straight into it. Um, I know you've a, you've an interesting backstory, but you, you've uh, in your humility you've you've wanted to focus on Host in Ireland um, and the ethos behind it. So let's jump straight into that. Yeah, sure. Um, one of the things that uh, I've seen demonstrated over the last thirty to 35 years in, in, in industry is, is been the success, um, of coopetition and collaboration. It's changed in the name. It's had different monikers, but fundamentally, when you look at bringing the best of any ecosystem together and branding them or presenting them in a singular, uh, point of reference, um, and I've always wanted to try and develop that we could go out to the market with that brand. Um, and I'm a technologist at heart and I've looked at competing different uh, technologies, going back to even VHS and Betamax. When did that actually expand and when did the market for home consumer video really take off was when the consumers didn't have to choose between Betamax and VHS. Yeah, it's true. So that whole competition side of things. They just wanted to say, well, which one will I buy? Because people were in fear. So therefore, what happened? People didn't buy. They they rented. Yeah, because they didn't want to get it wrong. They didn't want to get it wrong. Then you had even in the in the early days of uh, computing and technology, you had IBM, Digital, Nixdorf, Novell, Microsoft, all using proprietary protocols. So what did people do? They procrastinated. They procrastinated. What if I choose the wrong one? What if I invest this bit? So what came along? IP. And once IB came along as the de facto standard, the internet exploded, all technologies, and therefore we were able to connect the world together. So it, it worked on both ways, right? It worked on the, the, the side of the consumer, which were the businesses. The guy didn't have to answer the question, what if this technology loses? <laughs> and the second thing is, is that the, the manufacturers of the OEMs were able to make equipment that they knew was interoperable with others. So when you had that inter connected world, then you had more confidence, confidence on the consumer side, con- confidence on the supply chain. So I really wanted to to uh, see, could we do that with what was perceived globally as a successful marketplace, i.e. Ireland for the hosting of digital assets, um, and see, could we bring together the leading companies in that ecosystem? Um, who were great in the hosting side, were great, say, in the connectivity side, but they're all silos of greatness. And in in the words of of, of many uh, technologists in the past, so what? You know, you don't buy a motor car because it has a great spark plug. You don't buy a motor car because it's got a great sump. 99% of people buy a motor car because it's finished and you then can tweak it the color can be tweaked, but you want it all presented. And you want as well, in many respects, the car to be represented the same by the different dealerships. Because <laughs> if one dealer tells you that it does 25 miles a gallon and the other guy says it does 35 miles a gallon, you might go to another car. <laughs> yeah. You're not being told the same. So we set out um, two years ago now, just over two years, to see could we bring together all those parts. And uh, the obvious thing then is that these are big companies. The companies that are part of the competition are big competing companies globally. And that's why you must engage at the sea level. Because, you know, these guys at sea level are being paid, you hope, to be strategic and tactical. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so therefore, they, they shouldn't be, and they, in our case, they weren't driven by fear of failure. Um, so by bringing a whole group of them together who were comp- competitors and saying, you know what, guys, um, wait, if you come together, brand yourselves as a entity that understands the issues, then the clients are more likely to engage. So we launched Host in Ireland initially with six partners um, and we, we made it simple. Um, I think I said earlier, uh, I've never had a unique idea probably in my whole life, but the looking back, you know, if you want to know what the road looks like going forward, probably ask somebody else coming back the other way. Yeah. <laughs> he may not be on the same bicycle you're on. He may be not be wearing the same shoes you are, but there's always somewhere, somewhere has tried something that you're thinking about. And why not learn from his experiences? So I looked actually at uh, Tony O'Reilly's um, uh, time when he was working with the Irish dairy industry. And Ireland, as you know, always had great soil and grass and milk. We always had great butter. But it wasn't until he packaged it all up and said, Kerry Gold, 
put a gold bar and it said the greatest butter in the world or something to that effect that people asked actually started to say, oh, Ireland has the greatest butter. So he packaged with about the package. And that's what Hosting Ireland has done. It's taken all the great things that we we call our hosting ecosystem, which is, by the way, just in the evolution of how the world uh, consumes and accesses data. You know, in the, uh, and that's why I often say to people about Ireland's growth in hosting and data centers, it's absolutely just an evolution. Because if you think back to 60 years ago, when Ireland was the leading um, software company for IBM, Digital, Nixdorf, we were the biggest in the, the, the outside North America for the export of those pieces of hardware. Then Microsoft, Oracle, these people, we exported floppy disks. Now that's just evolved to ch- to be cloud. So all we've done is we've actually changed the mediums that we deliver. But we've always been the largest supplier in Europe of software, which is the cloud, which is Microsoft in the 80s, which then went on from a floppy disk to a CD-ROM that went on to a fob. And then you we're on cloud, so nobody has CDs. So bringing that together, topping and tailing it, and then most importantly, which I think is what Hosting Ireland stands for, is getting those self-same people who compete with each other in Ireland to go out internationally and stand shoulder to shoulder wearing Hosting Ireland shirt. So for instance, we're just back from New Orleans. We're just back from Austin. We just picked up a, an innovation award in Monaco where six of uh, our partners who are again, I say the US's largest stood shoulder to shoulder to accept the award. But that's where you, you, where you build confidence. That's where people say, oh, these guys seem to be at least talking to each other. They don't have to like each other. <laughs> so it's a, it's a, a collaborations at the heart of it. Oh, absolutely. Cooperation is, is at the heart of a cooperation between competitors. And that's, that's the essence is that we start conversations that the partners end. That's the whole idea. And, and, you know, like the motor car, we all can't, you know, own a McLaren, but I think McLaren is owned by Mercedes or the other way around. But people say, Oh, I love McLaren. That's like the showcase. The closest that we can afford is probably the. BMW or their Mercedes or whoever owns them. So it, it, it very much is a competition. Mm. And not only that, now it started with four. We've now grown it to 17. The 17 now aren't just Irish companies that are, are, are here in Ireland or American companies calling Ireland home. They're American companies that want to join in to promote Ireland because they believe in the f- power of what we call the five P's. And the five P's is what hosting Ireland is all about. And it goes back to our policies, our pedigree, our people, our power and our pipes. Throw them all together. Wrap around then that all those things are the issues that business care about now. You know, policies on data privacy, data protection, sovereignty. Sea levels care about that stuff, you know, because that's brand protection. Right down the different layers to power and pipes. If you don't have power, you don't have pipes to distribute the content, you don't have anything. So it's to bring that together, wrap it around then, strong brands that people are... Success for us is when people come to us and say, I can't believe those two are working together. Yeah. Yes, home run. Yeah, brilliant. That's the home run because that's what they don't do in other places. You know, but they have data centers, they have communications infrastructure, they have tax incentives, they have all the things. But when you bring them together, that's one thing. But when you actually get them, the people who make money from it, to come together as well, then people go, huh, that reduces what's most important in the world, risk. Yeah. Because we all live, most people live by risk. It's interesting, Gary, because you kind of take a step back and you kind of go look at even companies. So companies who, like, you you know, we talked about Sony beforehand, like Sony, deeply siloed company Mm -hmm. back. And and when they really got hit in, in the early noughties, their stock up absolutely plummeted but th- they discovered they had these massive silos in the company and nobody was collaborating across the company and what you, you what, like just to draw an analogy with that what you've kind of come in is at a new, as a neutral partner that doesn't have an agenda essentially because if one silo was to approach another and go and go look let's work together the immediate thing because you mentioned the fear factor in the amygdala uh, the lizard brain going, oh, what's he after? What's he <laughs> <laughs> what's trying to steal my lunch yeah, yeah. here? Yeah, yeah. And you're kind of do- doing that at, a, at, a, at an industry level and kind of going, guys, we need to work together because if we don't, 
yeah. we're going to struggle to challenge the world because we're up against yeah. the rest of the world here. You, 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 you've, you, we're going to recruit you for our marketing <laughs> department because that's just it in a, in, a, in a nutshell. The other thing to be most important is I don't work in the industry. I work on the industry. All the guys and all our partners work in it day in, day out. They have all the nuts and bolts. If you try and think of putting a person from in the industry to the top of any association, guess what? At some stage, some people is going to turn around and say, why am I telling him all this? What's in it for his organization? Therefore, I don't work for any of the 17 partners. I work on the industry. These guys have forgotten more about what they do than I'll ever know. That's not our job. Yeah. Our job is to take the key ingredient parts, join them together and make it easier for the consumer, which in this case is business, to understand why would I even look at that place? Because we often get, and that's what the beauty of travel is, you know, travel opens your eyes to see whether what we call a problem is just the global norm. And then it's not a problem anymore. It's just a, a, a global challenge. And that's when I hear a lot of discussions around Ireland has too much hosting. It's taking us over all our natural resources and energy and stuff. It's as if it's been presented as if it's only here. This is a global challenge. Like your listeners today, if you don't want data to continue to be the oxygen of your life, Turn off your phone, turn off your internet radio, which many of your people will be listening to now. Everything is going to stop if you don't want to buy into the digital world that we're in. Software is eating the physical. But, you know, go back to the printing press, 1956, which is a fantastic statement from one of the, the, uh, um, religious order at the time. He said, the only thing good that can come out, the only thing that'll come out of printing presses is it'll make monks lazy. <laughs> right? So that's 500, 600 years ago. Yeah. You'll always have the establishment detracting from when you, you, you want to do something differently. And, you know, a lot of our partners, they're not the biggest in some cases. There are bigger companies in Ireland that should and would benefit from it. But again, it comes down to fear. You know, it comes down to that fear. Oh, what if it goes wrong? Yeah. Whereas, unfortunately or fortunately for people like me, I actually say, how many times better would it be if it goes right? Because you're going to fail. Yeah. Right? I've failed many, many times. I'm just lucky that the ones I failed were smaller than the ones that succeeded. Yeah. Um, in lots of aspects, you know, and that's the key. You've got to go into collaboration and cooperation with a mindset of, we're going to make this work. Because I have a field, you know, cooperation in farming in Ireland, you know, until such time as the guy said, let's establish co-ops hmm. and have one combine harvester to be able to compete with the other county. So we've exemplars here. And what's most unique about a cooperation like host in Ireland is you see collaboration. It's usually in research and development. It's usually at the technological level. We're at the front line. It's this, it's the PR sales and marketing of the actual whole ecosystem. Yeah. Um, and that's where the ego comes out a lot mm. with a lot of, and they're all happy enough. And, and I showed you maybe pictures earlier of the guys down in Monaco. You know, they're happy enough just to, well, Monaco's not the worst place to go anyway. But, yeah. um, but what it represented was that these guys are prepared to be proud of their investment in this ecosystem and stand shoulder by shoulder to win an award together. Yeah. So to go back to your car analogy, in a way, you, you know, you, you have one guy, one company that's exemplars in the doors, another in spark plugs, another in windscreens, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> but you're the one putting the brochure together, essentially, and kind of going to the other countries and kind of going, look, this is what you can get in Ireland and then delivering on that promise as well. Yeah. Well, that's, that's the key is to, to, as, as I said, start the discussion. Yeah, because sometimes when you're in Ireland, you think everybody thinks the same as we do, um, and everybody knows about us. But actually, what filters up to the top can often be very different. You know, you tell me something, and I'll tell five people, and by the time it comes back around to you, it's probably different. Yeah, and we're also competing in a highly competitive global world where you know ignorance is an option. Yeah, ignorance now is an option. Yeah, since Google search or whatever, you know, if you want to know anything about anything within reason, 
you can Google it. Yeah. So you choose to be ignorant on a geographic location. What's wonderful now, what we're finding is that when people Google about this particular subject matter, we have uh, leading companies using um, the same basic principles of the five P's to, ex- to, to promote their part of it. And it gives confidence to the consumer then to say, okay, well, it seems to be very consistent. You know, yeah. it seems to be very consistent. They seem to be talking to each other because data is the new oxygen of the world or whatever you want to call it, the new oil and stuff. The decision to put it somewhere isn't just based on one facet. It has to all blend together. Yeah. And that's why ultimately, if all the bits look great on paper, then you want to see like, like you, you, when you were playing rugby, I'm sure you saw loads of great emerging young players that on statistics look great. But they'd no uh, uh, match sense, yeah. No game sense, or hard work. <laughs> they they yeah. wouldn't apply themselves, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. So statistically, everything works in the spreadsheet. But you've got to then see, well, who's in that ecosystem? How well are they working together? Because a lot of the partners that we uh, have in, in and and those that aren't, it doesn't matter how great where your data rests. How do you get it in and get it out? That's another partner. How do you get it in and get it out of the country? That's another partner. What happens in the event that there's data privacy issues? Who do you talk to? So we're bringing it all under one. Somebody can navigate the system and understand it and then ultimately say, let's look deeper into it. Mm. It's so true because you, you, you do need that um, objective observer to be kind of, because like you say, everybody's working in the business mm-hmm. and very few have time to, and now I, I think it's wrong I've said it on the show before that you need a team within your company to be looking, working on the business all the time. And it's very, very rare that happens. And for innovation to happen in any company, you need a team that's removed from the business as per business as usual today. Yeah. Otherwise, you're not going to innovate because yeah. they have to exist by a different set yeah. of rules to, yeah. to future proof the company. But in a way, you're that outsourced partner that's doing that and kind of going, I suppose, more less than outsourced because you're, you're a partner. Yeah. But you're you've got everybody's interest uh, in hand, and you're not. There's there's nobody getting any favors, no favoritism. So therefore, as you as you said about the fear factor, it's lesser because you're dealing with C C level execs. They're kind of going, you know what, Gar- Gary and the host in Ireland team have this. They got it. Yeah, and they can tap into it and use it as a term of reference. Yeah, as well. And and you're so right with regard to um, the whole working together idea um to say that all the partners outside of the time we have the executive council meetings or the advisory council meetings go out and hug and kiss each other down the street no way (laughs) they go back to being same way as again i'll I'll go back to your rugby days when you represented whoever your team and you then went to play for leinster you were a team when you were in leinster but then yeah you know back back on saturday you know and that's the way you want it yeah because otherwise you could have a a suggestion that everybody's in cahoots with each other yeah it's not the case but it is very important that everybody understands the rules of the game yeah and and it's more important that the supporters understand the consistency of the rules of the game you know and that's why bringing a group like this and we were very lucky i was very lucky that at the time two years ago when i brought the idea to the initial five c levels they got it. Brilliant. They got it. Yeah, yeah. And it's amazing when five guys get it, then you seem to, s- well, if they're in, I'm not sure why. Yeah, you feel in, a bit I, uncomfortable. I want to be FOMO. in. FOMO. I want to be in. Yeah, yeah. But we've just been lucky that uh, and we're up, up to 17 now and uh, um, we're lucky enough that some are coming to us and saying, look, Brilliant. We're, we're from X geographic location. Yeah. We're investing in Ireland. We'd like to be part of this. It's so interesting you say about the, um, you know, you, you want them to be competitors mm-hmm. and then, but you want them to cooperate on certain levels. And, uh, one of the best analogies I heard was that I wrote a blog post on it is, uh, the watering hole, the phenomenon of the watering hole in nature where, all the animals come together and the tiger and the gazelle will drink peacefully yeah. <laughs> at the watering hole. Then yeah. they go back into the jungle and kill, a, <laughs> kill each other. Eat each other. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, literally, yeah. <laughs> and it goes yeah. a bit further than eating somebody else's yeah. lunch. But um, Yeah, but that's, that's, that's what you want too because that brings a real dynamic to the group as well. Yeah. And so, Gar- Gary, where, where can companies get in touch and what type of companies should get in touch? 
It all goes through the website. Yeah. Um, it all goes through the hostinireland.com website. Um, and there you'll be able to connect with the, all the micro details on the five P's, examples of who are here, who's doing what, why they're doing what, uh, more importantly, and also, also then the individual members of the ecosystem. But interestingly enough, and a bit like you either are in the interest of the why for Ireland as distinct to individual agendas at the, 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 the individual members level, it's nearly all about host in Ireland. So members of the ecosystem that aren't members of host in Ireland benefit exactly the same as those that are actually members and writing the check. And that's what you want to do as well. Yeah. And, and ultimately, you know, you asked me before why I did what I'm doing. It's really quite easy. I think that uh, two young kids, I'd love them to have an option when they're coming out the other side of the university that do I stay or do I go? Yeah. That's all you want to do. Do I stay or do I go? Yeah. And up to maybe up to this generation, um, a lot have had, haven't had that option. So everything I do every day is give them the option. Do I stay or do I go? But not having to go. The first reason is I can't spare them. <laughs> Mother's <laughs> tears. <laughs> it's a real leadership thing. I mean, le leadership is essentially enablement and facilitation and creating the environment for success to happen. I'm delighted I met you, Gary, because I, I didn't know enough about Host in Ireland. I'd seen bits and pieces on social media hmm. um, and people can get in touch at Host in Ireland on Twitter. Yeah. Um, but I'm delighted to get a deep understanding of it. And it's fantastic work you're doing. We wish you the very best to look. To your listeners, there's cheaper tax somewhere else. There's cheaper energy somewhere else. There's more connectivity somewhere else. There's more people somewhere else. When you blend it all together and then present it, people want to know why, you know, yeah. why, why, how did they do it? Yeah. You yeah. know, and after you get over the fact that, uh, we get you all drunk and we get compromised, <laughs> get compromising pictures of you. <laughs> That's the secret sauce. That's the secret sauce. Oh, sorry. Am I, am I live? <laughs> well, Gary Connolly, president of Host in Ireland and hostinireland.com. Thank you for coming in to us. No, you're very welcome. Thank you.